today, the hens are laying mighty well. And here's the kettle boiling ready to make a cup of tea. And as soon as I make the tea, that Mary Ellen will be in, for she's got her nose on it that can smell out anything. What did I tell you? Oh, you're just a time. Come on in. Oh, am I now? Well, I don't object to a cup of tea any time. Yeah. Always on time. Here, there's a cup of tea for you. You can't beat a cup of tea. There. Oh, well. I'm often wondering since June went and left me why it is I've never been married. I fancy I'm middle and comfortable looking. And I've got a nice little coffee trap in here. And even a tiny little slop at me. That's hidden up the chimney. <laughs> but the men that's been hanging around here, they've been no good at all. So here I am, still left wondering. After all, it's not for us to be wondering or questioning. It's fate, I reckon. What oh. is to be, will be, whether we like it or no. And there's no getting away from it, as far as I can see. You see, some of us will have to be content with our lot and go without. Oh. For there isn't enough men to go around. <laughs> and some of the fellas is not worth. And there's many a married woman. They'd be as glad to be as free and as independent as what we are. We can go out and we can come in just as we please and nobody to say yay or nay. Aye, but that's just it, Mary Ellen. It would be a change to hear yay and nay. <laughs> Aye, even a change to be bossed about a bit. Sometimes when nobody calls, I find myself talking to myself and not bothering to cook a decent meal. And then I'm thinking, how nice it would be to have a man coming in and eating a good meal and smacking his lips and saying, that's a fine bit of pastry you made tonight, Gina. <laughs> that must be one of the best cooks on the island. Yeah. There's not many men saying them kinds of things nowadays. <laughs> they come in all gruff like and sit themselves down at the table, eating their meals in silence, burying their faces in the newspaper and taking no more notice of you than if you wasn't even there. And then they'd be putting their dirty owl boots on your clean fender and dropping tobacco ash on your clean white hands. <laughs> oh, you mark my words. They're nothing but worry and trouble. <laughs> You'd be cooking and cleaning and washing and mending from morning to night. And then, if you wasn't all bright and cheerful like, they'd be grumbling at you. Ooh. Take that credulous drill air of a fella down the road there. Such a toot of a man. There's that life of his, up and out to work in the morning before he's ever even up. And then, when she's coming home in the evening, he's sitting at the table, waiting for a meal to be put in front of him. Not even a potato dug up and another kettle put on. Oh, and such a bog of a man must be sick for all. Ah, sick indeed. Mortal queer sickness he's got, for it's not near no doctor he'll go. And perhaps he, if he did, he'd be telling him his weakness was all due to rheumatism. There's an awful lot of bits about in this damp weather. <laughs> rheumatism me foot. There's only one kind of rheumatism that fella's got, and that's Manx rheumatism. <laughs> <laughs> that gets a terrible howl on a fella if he gets into it. <laughs> you just be thankful, Jane Ann, and stay as you are. Well, you seem to know a lot about it for all your spinster, but even so, I'd like a change. I get sick of doing the same old thing day in, day out, and I really would like a change. Aye, even a change for the worse would be a change. <laughs> <laughs> it gets very dreary sitting here in the long winter nights, and sometimes I dread the evening coming on. Ah, there's no need to be like that, for there's plenty going on down at the church or the chapel, all kinds of do's and socials and them sorts of things, 
and them always ended up with a cup of tea and a cushion. That's not that kind of excitement I <laughs> Anyway, I must be putting some more bones on the fire. I want to get the oven hot and do a bit of bacon tonight, seeing as it's all Christmas Eve. Oh, Lord, who can this be at this time of the night? I'll have to go and see. <laughs> oh, gee, buddy, me, it's you, it is. And what wind's blowing you here tonight? Oh, well, you'd better come in and have the last cup of tea in the pot. Oh, thank you. Thank you, kind Auntie, then. I will not forget your kindness. And if you can give me a cup of tea and a bit of snow to eat, I'll eat your leaves for you and for your friends if you like. Oh, well. That'll be a bit of excitement. <laughs> and as it is old Christmas Eve, we might as well learn our thing. But Mary Ellen says it's no use. Whatever in for us, we'll get it, whether we like it or no. Oh, well, I'm not meaning no harm. None of them see and do things in the leaves for you. It's only right you should know. Oh, come on, old Christmas Eve. It's quite appropriate. The old folk did, and never did them no harm. Oh, oh, well, settle down then and drink up, and then we'll turn our cups round and you can read our fortune. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm not at all sure I'm agreeing with us, this sort of thing. Tom Bullery, I call it. How ever can anyone see the future in a few take-ups, tail waves, I'd like to know. It isn't natural. Howsoever, as it is on Christmas Eve, <laughs> I'll let you read me cup. But I'll not believe a word of it, because I can't see how tear cups and tear leaves has got anything to do with it. Well, it's the gift of second sight you've got to have. And these things come to you without you knowing. Some are seeing more than others. Some are going round <coughs> quite blind. Me, with my dark eyes, I'm seeing deeper and further than others. Oh, oh well. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me cup already. And let me know in the worst. I'll believe it all when I see it. Oh, oh, oh. well, there's mortal queer things going to happen here. Oh. And happen soon. There's three strangers right at the top of your cup. Two of them are carrying a bag. And the third fella is carrying something queer. Mm -hmm. I can't make out what it is at all. But he's the youngest. Oh, and he's quite a handsome fella. Tall and dark. And he's going to be staying longer than all the others. It's the kind of tea I get down at the co-op. There's our long bits of snow. <laughs> <laughs> and they tell me that they're tall, handsome men. But let me tell you, there's no tall, dark, handsome men about yet. You cut out that business and get on with the rest of the story. Well, if I were you, I wouldn't be so anxious to hear about the others. For one of them's coming here for money, he's oh. held his hand out. Oh. The other one's, oh, it's the doctor. Oh, that's bound to be trouble. Oh dear. There's an awful lot of black tea laid in the bottom of your cup. And that always means trouble. Plenty of it. And soon. <coughs> I wouldn't wonder. See, this long arm here at the bottom of your cup, it's the long arm of the law. Ooh. So look out, you're in for some trouble. And soon. <laughs> I tell you no good would come of this, Jane Ann. <laughs> oh, I don't think I'll tempt Providence by having me cup red. I'm not so sure it's the right thing to do. Oh, well, you mean worry Mary Ellen. You swiveled your cup round that claim. There's hardly <coughs> any tea leaves left in there to read, except just this one big one here, at the edge. And that means a surprise soon for someone close to you. Oh, oh well, that's that. <laughs> now, what would you advise us to do to celebrate Christmas Eve in the old fashioned way? Well, as the two of you are spinsters, I can think of nothing better for you to do than to make and bake a dumb cake. <gasps> Dumb cake? What ever in the world is that kind of a cake at all? Well, I've made bonnets and soda cake.
cakes and oatmeal cakes and bun currants. <laughs> but I've never made a dumb cake no. at all. I haven't that. No, no. well, tie tie you did. And this is the way you do it. You must gather together all the ingredients for making a cake, mix them and bake the cake, then eat a piece of it without saying a word under any circumstances for any provocation whatsoever. Then, when that's all done, you turn this charm over three times and wish and the first man to eat a piece of it be your future husband. Lord, them's terrible conditions to be sure. <laughs> I don't know how you could fulfil them unless you lived entirely on your own. And then, how long will it be that you'd have to wait? It might be many a month before a single man crossed your threshold, and then the cake be so stale it wouldn't be fit to offer. Well, those are the conditions you can but only try. It won't do you any harm because you'll put your mind to it. And you'll have made a mortal good cake. Oh, well. Well, after all, I suppose as many a cake I've made that way myself now, come to think of it. <laughs> but I've never noticed anything unusual happening, only that it was set up by one or another. I don't think there's anything in it. Any woman can make a bake a cake in complete silence. For it isn't often that a woman is speaking when she's working, I'm sure. Well, I wouldn't be so sure. I mean, many's the interruptions that can be had when you start to bake the cake. And if you're in the habit of speaking out loud, and you're saying, where's the salt, where's the butter? Well, then you see, charm wouldn't work then. Oh, well, Jane Ann can please herself, but I don't think I'll be bothered. <laughs> After all, I can't think of any tall, handsome, single men that's likely to cross my threshold tonight that I'd want to marry. <laughs> so there, there isn't much choice around these quarters anyway. <laughs> anyway, I'd better be off now or else me fire will be out. It's stubborn awful today and real cocksy to life this morning. Uh, I'd better be getting off too. I want to be well on my way before the dark sets in. And tell me, if you do meet this young, handsome fella, be sure, let me know. I want to come to the wedding. Oh, Lord, it's far too early to be talking about weddings. We'll just have to wait and see. But I must be getting the oven hot and getting the bacon done. There's not a scrap of cake in the house. And if I'm going to have three visitors, I'll have to have something to put before them. Or I'll lose me luck. So, go on. Good night to the pair again. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, dear. I think I'll have a try, though. <laughs> there might be something in it. And me luck's good today. If I set me mind to making a cake, I could have it done in no time. I don't think there'll be any more interruptions. So, from now on, I'll make a vow to keep me mouth closed, no matter what, until I get the cake done. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now. Is there anything else I'll be getting you? Or anything else I'll be doing for you? I'm not liking it. Leave him like this at all. I'm thinking it's a doctor you're needing, Jane Ann. Come on, quickly, too. I'll tell you what. I'll go and fetch old Dr. Clegg. He'll come along. I'm sure. Don't need to be worrying. We're not to pay nothing now. We're all on the national health. <laughs> oh, I feel it's my duty to go and fetch the doctor. I'd be solidly proved if I went and left you alone in this state. I want that. Oh, now, you just sit down and quiet yourself. I'll bring the doctor back with me. Sit down in that chair and rest yourself. I'll not be gone many minutes. Try and tell us if it'll be any help to you. <laughs> is your voice is gone? <laughs> is it a fright you've had? <laughs> is it a pain you've got? <laughs> Where is it then? You must try and tell me. Dear me, this is peculiar. It must be some kind of seizure affecting the voice. <laughs> I've better take a pulse and sound the chest. <laughs> is quite normal. Let's just see what a set chair sounds like. <laughs> Big breath, Jane. <laughs> Symptoms. Oh, only about half an hour ago. Oh, I called it cracked insurance. He generally greets me quite pleasantly and is quite chatty. He reached, said he enjoys the company. But tonight she didn't even say good evening, but just started <coughs> nodding her head, shaking her arms all over the place. But not a word did she say. Well, dear me, it must be awful sudden because I know she was all right this morning. Let's have a look at this now. Yeah, the temperature's quite normal too. Mr. Cullish, should be good enough to pass me a glass of water and a spoon? It must be just past the voice. I'd better examine the throat. I think I'd better just sterilise this thermometer. I've got. I had to borrow this of John Kennick this morning. <laughs>
Trouble at all, Jane Ann. As long as you're all right again. But tell me now, what is the matter with you? Well, I made a vow as it was old Christmas Eve that I'd make and bake a cake without speaking one word. I might have wanted to try any chance again, since there's never <coughs> been any news of you, and you know. It was sort of a wager, or a dare, or a fortune, or something like that. Oh, I do hope you'll understand me. I'm glad to learn that me pulse, and me lungs, <coughs> and me bits are all right. <laughs> Thank you for that, Doctor. But here, I'll lap a piece of this cake up for you, and you can take it home with you. And when it's a bit cooler, you can eat it, eat it if you wish. But I hope you'll go away and not mention what I've said to anyone. There's so many gossips about here. They make me feel the fool I am. Well, you know, thank you, Jane. You know you can trust me to understand. But I'm not so sure about that, Mr. Quidditch. Some of these fellows are inclined to talk and like to tell a tale. But if I see them, I'll speak to them on the quiet and give them a hint to keep his mouth closed about tonight. Well... Thank you, Jane. I must be off. It's not often I leave an emergency case in such a good state of health and spirits. <laughs> and I hope you win your dare and your man. Oh, well. I don't think I've seen a woman so silent for so long before. <laughs> Most unusual experience. <laughs> well, now that's all over. I can settle down and tidy the place <clears throat> up a bit before I have any more visitors. Oh, I hope the doctor meets Mr. Krulish and cancels the order for that there ambulance. I don't want that coming up to the doer, or all the street will be out to see what's going on, and then the whole story will be out. It's a wonder they didn't see the doctor coming in, and Al Krulish rushing out. They must have been busy at their teas. Too much time on the hands, and they're always peeping behind the curtains. Oh, dear. I will say this, though. The first part of Bexy's fortune has come true. Two visitors and both carrying bags. And then I made one of the best cakes I've ever made. Real good it was. I'm glad the doctor took a piece for all his trouble, the poor man. Ah, well. I'm wondering who will be coming in next. Tall and dark, I think Betsy said. But there now. I mustn't be getting foolish. I must remember me age for all. No, it won't be a handsome man that will be coming in. It'll be that Mary Ellen with some more nuisance. I bet she couldn't make and bake a cake if she'd had to go through all I'd have been through tonight. <laughs> anyway, I'd turned the charm over three times and I'd wished, and now I'm just waiting. Don't believe it until I tell you. Go to your friend, I'm so famished. That must be one of the best cakes I've ever tasted. Put that end in that one. You must be one of the best cooks in the whole aisle. Well, I don't understand. Some fellas missed having you for a good wife, or all. This is hell. Comfortable looking. That's a mighty tidy house you got here, too. I would wonder if it got a little black stock and didn't look the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> I thought as much, but I'm in no rush. I've got a comfortable chair and a Good fire and a real good cake. All I'm looking for is a good cup of tea to wash down with. Yeah. Now the cup's in. There's a cup still in the pot. Now where's the cup? Just a bit. Well, I'll 
seeing you made yourself so comfortable. Hope you don't mind me having a little bit of a smink. After all, there's no place for a man to buy his own fire now, is there? <laughs> Many a man wouldn't go wrong if he'd had a good woman and a nice little place like this now, would he? Dad, don't be standing there like a stone image. How are you going to hard at all? You might as well sit yourself down in that chair and no rush. Dad, do your towel. And don't get awkward with me, and no harm will come to you. <laughs> This reminds me of when I was a broth of a boy. I mean, old Mother McCree would be sitting knitting by the light of an all oil lamp. Ah, how happy I was then. But I've gone a long way since then, sure I have. And I've had a good woman to look after you like yourself. I want to save myself a whole lot of trouble. Something to remind me of you. See you later. Oh, bye. Bye. Oh, I 
never did trust them dark looking tramps. He's been up to some mischief, I'll be bound. Oh, don't always be so suspicious. he got lovely eyes. And quite a nice way with them, too. Aye, perhaps he had. And perhaps it was more of a taken way. <laughs> you just be careful that he hasn't took more than your dumb cake. I'll be off now that I know you're all right. Dumb cake indeed. Aye. Go on. <coughs> play go on this Dalek play. And um, don't you worry, we'll keep it going. We've had a few young women interested, so... 